It's time for church! Good morning, it's time for Sunday worship. Time for church! It's time for church! Good morning and welcome to this, our virtual service. Indeed, from our house to your house, it's so great to be able to share with you. For those of you who don't know us, my name's Esther and this is David and we are from St Nicholas Church in Flimby. We're joined this morning by Chris Ashcroft, who's giving us our message, and by Alison Wells, who's leading us in our prayers today. It's really great to have other people involved from all the different church, well, from various different churches across the Maryport team. As some of you may already know, some of our churches are actually managing to be open again and actually people are able to meet in person to actually join together in worship, which is really great news, isn't it? Yeah. But we do know that some people are still vulnerable or still nervous about going out and for them, it's very important that we can still share in that time of worship. So if you're at home thinking, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to church and I don't know what's happening, don't worry, for the time being... Church still, is still coming to you. Church is still coming to you, uh, which does mean you're still stuck with us, so... Yeah, sorry. So first, let's open with a word of prayer. Let's pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Amen. And we're now going to sing our first song.
sometimes we do things that we know we shouldn't. So let us just take some time now to come to God and say sorry for all those things. So let us join together to pray to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, some words of praise. Let's join together and say these. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through the one who loved us. Our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling before him she asked a favour of him and he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit one at your right hand and one at your left 
in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. Then the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came to be not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostles were sensing that the Kingdom of God was near, from the things that Jesus had said to them over the preceding weeks. Unfortunately, some of them were thinking about their own ambitions for this town, and how it would affect them when the Kingdom of God arose. They had not taken to heart the sermon that Jesus gave to them in Matthew chapter 18, when he taught them about humility. They did not understand that they would be driven to deny themselves and take up their cross of suffering and follow the Lord in humble service if they wished to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus had just spoken of his own upcoming sufferings, his crucifixion and resurrection, yet they were preoccupied with their own concerns. As Jesus led them towards Jerusalem, the mother of James and John appeals to Jesus for positions of honour for her sons. Interestingly, the mother of James and John was later in the Bible referred to as the sister of Mary, Mary, mother of Jesus. Note also when this story is told in Mark, it is James and John themselves who make the request. That request was for positions of special authority and greater influence when the King of Kingdom of God arose. As he so often did, Jesus answered them with a question of his own, a question which reinforced the fact of his upcoming sufferings. Jesus asked James and John if they too would be able to stand the suffering that he was going to go through. Would they still remain faithful to God to the end? They answered that they would be able to do so. The kingdom on earth that the apostles knew was, about, was full of power, position, ambition and dominance. But Jesus' kingdom would be just the opposite. The kingdom of God would give prominence to humble service. James and John were looking at things in a very selfish way, trying to find out what they could get when the Kingdom of God came. Jesus went on to try to explain that to gain prominence in the Kingdom of Heaven, it would be just the opposite to what it is on earth. To be great in the Kingdom of Heaven would not be to tell others what to do, but would be to serve as a servant or a slave of others just as in the way that Jesus had come not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. To give his life, to save us from all our sins, so that we too could enter the kingdom of heaven. The lesson to the apostles at this time was a clear call to humble servitude which would then bring them closer to the Kingdom of God. Jesus was patiently preparing his disciples, not only about the coming jolt of his death and resurrection, but about the fact that to enter the Kingdom of God, it would be necessary to serve others in humility. We must take this as our guide 
and take to our hearts and act on the final words of this reading. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. to have a time of prayer. My bidding will be, Lord, in your mercy, if you could respond with, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for the church today, buildings reopening gradually in these strange times. We thank you that we can meet together again with our church friends and praise you together at last. Help us to accept and treasure the new ways of worship, even if it is not yet all that we would like it to be. Thank you for the hard work of clergy and wardens that have made the reopening of church buildings possible. Just as importantly, we thank you for the new ways we have come to share worship, such as this online service, 
that allows those isolated at home to feel part of our church family. Thank you for all the wonders of technology that have sustained this country during lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all of your creation, but the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories and statistics about coronavirus. People are still very worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their family and friends. Be with them. Help them to find peace. Thank you that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and know that you will keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give wisdom to all those in authority in every country. We pray especially for our Queen and all those in authority whose decisions affect us so much. We pray for our government and our local councils. Give them wisdom and integrity that they may lead our communities to respond to this crisis for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in these times many people are suffering because of the impact the virus is having on our economy. Families are struggling financially. Jobs and businesses are being lost. Parents are finding it difficult to put food on the table and turning in record numbers to food banks. Keep us always, Lord, trusting in your compassion during this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious, the fearful and the isolated. Heal the sick. Lift up all those who are experiencing mental health problems. Help us to rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all those who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for cures and vaccines. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health. We ask that people be mindful of the effects of their actions on each other, following medical advice carefully and being responsible for the safety of other people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and the dead, hear us as we remember those who have died recently, of every faith or nation, and especially those precious to us. We thank you for your promise to them and to us that one day we will all have a share in your eternal kingdom. We ask for your presence and consolation to be with those who are grieving, especially those who live alone. We thank you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, who frees us from the fear of death forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we say together, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
now a blessing from the Iona community. May the everlasting God shield you, east and west and wherever you go. And the blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the God of life. The blessing of Christ be upon you, the blessing of the Christ of love. The blessing of the Spirit be upon you, the blessing of the Spirit of grace. The blessing of the Trinity be upon you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. It's been great to join together. Whether you've joined us live while it's premiering, or whether you're watching this having been to a physical service this morning. Or maybe you just had a lie in. Whatever it's logical. Absolutely. <laughs> we pray that you'll stay safe and take care this week. And we look forward to joining with you again next week when it will be our virtual family service. Please tell me you're not going to make me do a craft this time. You'll have to tune in to see. And the final word for today is not from us, but from Christine. Now I want to thank you for letting me share a short time with you this Sunday. I pray that God will bless you all during these troubled times. Be safe. Trust in Jesus and all will be well.